Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we will understand what is cascading about and cascadeless schedule. Okay, so what do we mean by cascade? Cascade means when effect of one thing is migrated to other and followed by other. Basically, the effect is migrating from one to other and then the next. So the effect is cascading, right? So here we will see the same effect is happening. Let's start with the example here. I have two schedules. So I'll call it schedule S1 and I'll call it S2. Okay. Now we know that the transaction progress in this manner that is this is the timeline and transaction T1 here starts with read one then write one again T2 read and write over the variable X. Okay. So I have not written one to subscript because I have characterized the transaction. But when you write schedule like this S1 equal to read X, then write X, then read X, then write X, then read X, then write X. Okay. So basically here both reads for example, this read and this read has to be specified that from which transaction it is. Okay. So as here, I have already characterized through this representation. So I have not written, but if you're writing schedule like this, you have to specify that this is from transaction one, this is from transaction one, this is from two, two, three, and three. Okay, fine. So here you can see transaction t1 starts with reading an item okay and then it writes back of course in between it can do some operation which i am not writing here then after the transaction t1 writes data item x you can see transaction t2 reads the data item x okay again it writes and then transaction t3 reads the same item right so basically these reading and writing are dependent. Now let's assume that at this point of time transaction this transaction T1 aborts. Okay, that is this transaction fails. Now when this transaction aborts as transaction T2 has read the data item which was not committed. So transaction T2 also abort. Okay. And again, T3 has read the data item which was not committed by T2. So, transaction T3 also abort. Okay. So, this cascading abort is very costly because many number of transactions are aborted. Okay. So, this is a strictly avoidable case. So, what we do? So, this is basically cascading abort okay this is cascading abort let me write it down okay the transactions are aborting one by one so this abort is cascading that's why we call it cascading abort now here you can see the same transaction but a bit with a small modification that transaction t2 reads the data item only after it has been committed by t1 okay so t1 writes the data item x but once it is commit, then transaction T2 reads it. Okay. So transaction T2 is reading a value of X, which is not dirty. Okay. Which has been committed. Fine. So now this is a safe read. Okay. Similarly here it is committed and then this is transaction T3 is reading. Right. So in any case, even if this is aborted here, but it will not abort okay i was assuming but i have already mentioned in the previous chapter uh, previous video that a committed transaction is not desired to abort okay a committed transaction is already committed it, it has been saved to the disk so this transaction is already over okay so there is no chance of aborting transaction t1 okay so this is cascadeless schedule in this schedule or in this kind of schedule cascading abort will not be there okay because all the transactions are reading the committed data okay so this is cascadeless schedule 
Now here you can see that in the first case where we had cascading abort, we have cascading rollback, okay? Because when this transaction aborts, it has to roll back, okay? Once this transaction rolls back, this T2 transaction also has to roll back. And then this T3 also has to roll back. So this is again cascading rollback. So due to cascading abort, cascading rollback happens. Of course, I mean, this these are uh, correlated terms. Once transaction abort, it will roll back. Okay, so this is also called cascading rollback. Fine. Now this is all about cascading abort and cascadeless schedule. Okay. So in next video, we will understand what is strict schedule and the correlation between this strict schedule, cascadeless schedule and recoverable schedule. Okay. So see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.